Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, Second Edition. So this is the first video for Chapter 13. Chapter 13 is a new chapter for this edition um, and includes a discussion of generalized linear models. So as to discuss in the chapter, generalized linear models is really kind of a catch-all term um, that can be applied to <laughs> regression models that are that are not our standard OLS linear regression. Um, so what I do in this chapter is look at three different kinds of outcome variables, um, binary, ordered, and nominal. When I first wrote um, this book, so the first edition, I was asked, like, can you do a chapter on, on Logit? And then with this, it was like, can you do a chapter on Logit? Um, so Logit is, it is specifically referring to, to binary outcomes. And, and my view this whole time was, you know, that's great. Um, cause it's a natural extension from, you know, it's the next step from, from linear regression. The problem is, a lot of disciplines or subfields don't have binary variables. So if I just do that, that's kind of like, eh, it's just, I'm going to like show you the thing and then only show you part of it. So what, what we do, he what I do here is look at kind of like the suite of them. It doesn't cover everything because a generalized linear model book, um, sorry, generalized linear models that's that's an entire book on its own right so it's a lot of stuff that could be covered so i tried to just cover kind of the sort of big big picture main things that that people use the other thing is um the chapter even though it's fairly long it still condenses a lot um there's a lot of things that i just kind of pass over or just you know include just a mention of because it would just it would just take too too much time and take take up so much space. Um, the chapter after this chapter fourteen also kind of falls into the realm of generalized linear models with count models. Uh, we will do some videos on that as well. All right, so this is uh, again the the first video in in this video we're going to look at a binary logit model. All right, so. This is a type of model, regression model, where our outcome variable has two values. Um, and we are using or assuming, um, sorry, we're using a logit regression model for this. So people, people, a lot of people have heard of logit and probit and like, what's the difference? The only difference is uh, the assumptions made about the error distributions. So logit has uh, the assumption that the errors follow a logistic distribution while probit assumes they follow a normal distribution. That's it. Um, there is some difference in differences between them in, in the interpretations um, and the, the results will be slightly different uh, just numerically, but you're going to most likely wind up with the same conclusions. Okay. So uh, I have my R markdown file here. I've set my library path and my working directory. Um, all right, for this, we're gonna use a data set that's, so it's a little old. Um, I don't love using older data sets, but I really like this data set because it has a question in here about how people plan to, plan to vote for the 2014 Scottish independence referendum. Um, it's a referendum whether Scotland should uh, leave the UK and form its own country or to stay with the, the UK. So that's really a driver of this. Um, this data set is saved as a Stata file. So we are going to load Haven, which is part of Tidyverse. And then we are going to uh, load the data set here. So I pulled it up. I already have it in here just to save some time. Okay, we're going to make tidyverse active. Um, all right, so we're going to use, we're, 
the regression model we're going to do is pretty simple. Um, just to keep things simple, we're going to use this vote or this variable here, ref vote dumb. <laughs> I know it's a terrible name, I guess. Um, but th this is a dummy variable for for people's vote, um, whether they plan to vote yes or plan to vote no. Um, we are going to create a new version of it where we save it as ref vote. So we're going to make it factor, and then we're also going to include this option here. So comma levels equals labels. So one of the nice things about uh, Stata data files that you read into R is that if, if those Stata files have labels, we can use those um, as well. And so they automatically bring in the labels. We don't have to label it ourselves. Okay. Um, so in this video, we're, we're going to use this as refote as our, our outcome variable. And then we're going to use three predictors. Um, one is uh, people's strength of Scottish identity. So where higher values mean they feel more sh strongly Scottish than British. Um, we're also going to use a variable that we're going to call trust. And so this variable is trust in the British government to uh, do what's right for the people. Okay. And we're going to do a whole, we have a whole bunch of nesting happening here. All right. Um, first, we're going to turn it into a factor and then we're going to reverse the values so that it goes from never trust to always trust. Uh, so people that never trust the British government to do what's best for the people versus always trust. You can imagine what this look, we'll see it, but you can imagine what it looks like. And then for this, um, for, the, for for our model here in this video, we're going to also uh, convert it to a numeric variable. All right, so there's an order to it. It has four values. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of it. And then lastly, we're going to just use age, um, which will make a comment in the chapter. Like, it's it's included right now is rage. <laughs> what, what it really is, so R is, is corresponding to respondent. So respondent age. Um, although it would be great if we did have, right, if we did have a variable called rage. That'd be, that'd be pretty sweet. Okay. So that's the changes we're going to make. Let's run that. Okay. We're all good. All right. So let's get to, let's get to the logit model here. Um, we are going to use, uh, an R function called GLM. That's just part of the base R, uh, package. We don't have to do any, we don't have to install anything or, or load any special things for this. Um, and the specification about the function is very, very, very similar to what we did with linear regression. Uh, so it looks very similar. It shouldn't be shocking what, what it looks like. Okay, so we are going to first start with summary, the summary function, just so that the, the logit results are printed. Uh, we're going to save the logit results um, with the object that we're naming model.logit. Okay, the assignment operator and then the function glm. And then we include our outcome variable ref vote tilde. And then, um, yeah, let's do it. Scott plus trust plus age. All right. And then we're going to specify that we want a logit model. Um, I think by default it's actually logit in GLM, but it's good to specify it. We're going to include this option family equals binomial and then parentheses link equals logit. Okay, so family is referring to the family of distributions, possible distributions. Uh, and it's kind of weird, but I don't know. That's how, that's what it's called. Um, so we're saying family, the, the one we're using, um, we're looking at a binomial distribution where there, where there's, um, there's a bunch of them. And the one we want is logit. So link is referring to the link function, which gets into some complicated stuff here, but I'm going to leave it. Um, so we have that. And then we specify the data. So data equals SSA. That's what we saved it as. 
Okay, so let's highlight this and run that. All right. The results we get here look very similar to what we did with lin linear regression, right? Um, we have kind of our model information down here, and then we have our predictors here. Um, the values that we have down here are slightly different than what we had for linear regression. For instance, we don't have R squared. Um, I talk about this later on. There's something called pseudo R squared that some people like. I, I do not like it. I don't think it's very useful because it's set up so that it, it appears. So pseudo means fake or, yeah, I mean, it means fake. Uh, not real, <laughs> fake. Um, it's it's set up to look like it, um, but you don't interpret it as as the amount of variance explained um so i'm not uh, it i feel like it always trips up people learning this for the first time um because they're like wait that's that's r squared don't we interpret it like that and it's like no it, it doesn't um there is a measure though there is a fit measure called aic and um on its own this measure is not actually that useful what we use it for is comparing with other models um I go into this a lot more in, in the chapter. Okay, so so let's just leave this alone. I mean, there's things we could do. So like in the chapter, I also include something about predicted versus actual, um, because there is a whole bunch of machine learning stuff that, that is focused around logit um, applications to say whether something is being classified correctly or not, or is in one group or a different group or something like that. Um, We'll just leave it for now. All right, so let's look at the, the predictors, okay? Understanding these, it's the same idea in terms of um, figuring out the whether a predictor is statistically significant or not. So, sorry, same idea as that what we have for linear regression. So we have our estimate here, which is our coefficient, the standard error of the estimate, the Z value, which is the same, roughly the same idea as T value, and then our probability, and then our stars, okay? So if you remember what we talked about with linear regression, the idea was if our estimate or coefficient is at least twice the size of the standard error, then it's statistically significant. The Z value is that calculation. It's just simply the estimate divided by the standard error. Here, the P value is corresponding to the Z value. Here, we're just looking for 0.05. And then if you don't like that, there's stars. <laughs> so we're looking to see, is there at least one star? So, okay, so, so when you're looking at this, it's like, you should not get this wrong um, in terms of figuring out whether something's statistically, or statistically significant or not because there's so much redundant information here. Although I guess if, if, if for some reason you're in, inversing everything, um, inverting everything, then you could be like, yeah, it's all saying that it's it's not significant. Um, okay. So the estimates we get, we cannot interpret them directly like we can for linear regression. Um, these coefficients here are the log odds. Um, and so we need to do a different way of interpreting them. For logit, we're going to look at in a, in a, in a, in a video just in a little bit um, odds ratio interpretations, and also look at predicted probability interpretation. Um, odds ratio we can only use with logit. Predicted pr probability we can use with logit or probit. So, so let's look at this. Let's look at these. You know. What do we have here? So we have that they're all three predictors are statistically significant. We see that Scott has a positive uh, coefficient. So even though we can't directly interpret the coefficient, what we can say is, so as people's strength of Scottish, Scottishness or their, 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 the strength of their Scottish identity increases, they're more likely to vote yes, or they're more likely to say they plan to vote yes in the referendum. Um, 
trust. If you remember, we coded it so it went from never trust the British government to always trust. Uh, and, and what I should have said earlier, by British government means like U Westminster, UK Parliament, the Prime Minister of the UK, that British government. Um, so that's so the negative sign says that as people are more trusting, then they're less likely to vote yes or less likely to to say they're going to vote yes um, and then age also is negative so older people are less likely to vote yes okay um, in the chapter I also show you that we can plot the the coefficients here using the same functions and information that we did for linear regression the same ideas happening um, so that's that's it for for this video we're gonna come back to this model and go through all the interpretations um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time